carrying all the weight in the regression effect. And you, what is key in terms of estimating a nonlinear effect is the R squared change. You, and it's much smaller F value of 22, and the F change is equal to 0 0.05. Uh, percent or 5.3 percent in the dependent variable all right so in my opinion uh, it's useless to calculate use the curve estimation technique the analyze regression curve estimation what I just did it's I don't find any use in that at all uh, so if you're interested in understanding what your incremental predictive capacity is by including a non-linear uh, term in your regression equation. What is useful is that you can get the uh, regression line that is uh, it got one bend in the regression effect. In SPSS, it's pretty easy to calculate this uh, or to add this linear regression line in a plot, much like I did earlier. Uh, so in here, uh, you can add uh, a, a regression line pretty simply by just clicking that this over here. Uh, you get the, the linear effect, the linear regression line. But how do you get the curved line? I don't know how you do that in that option. I don't think it's possible. Uh, at least not through the GUI, through the menu driven. But when you go, go, when you go through analyze regression curve estimation, it automatically produces a scatter plot which includes the uh, quadratic effect. And we can see that there's one bend in the regression line. And we can um, pretty up the, um, the, ver the plot if we wanted to. I've got another uh, video on how to make a, um, a scatter plot prettier than the output for SPSS. I encourage you to check that out. Uh, so when I do nonlinear regression, which I actually do fairly often, because you'd be surprised how often you will find nonlinear. It's almost always one bend in the regression line. I'll do a separate video where we look at uh, more complicated cubic functions uh, where you expect two bends in the regression line. In the behavioral sciences it's very uncommon. Maybe in economics you might find that or in the physical sciences. But in the behavioral sciences you will find nonlinear effects uh, and they're almost always uh, one bend in the regression line, one, reg one quadratic function and uh, you can get the, the scatter plot in SPSS with that second bend in the regression line. That can be quite useful to, to show people uh, the strength of the effect. Now the last thing I want to talk about is that it doesn't matter what curve there is in the uh, regression line, whether it's going from up and then down or whether it goes up and then up even more. And I think um, you know, probably more often than not, that's actually how you uh, get real data in the behavioral sciences. And so I've simulated another data set to show that it doesn't matter what kind of bend in the regression line, uh, you uh, still use the same uh, squared variable to uh, include in your hierarchical mul multiple regression. So let's just look at this in a, in a scatter plot. Um, actually, I'll, I'll actually do it through the curve estimation first because the scatter plot's actually nicer that way. But the actual results, in my opinion, are not useful. So I just want my quadratic. And let's see, this is going to be high de highly idealized, but it's going to be curved in the opposite direction. See how uh, I've got the linear effect here, and then it's very, very idealized, but I've got a second function that is curved. There's one bend in the regression line. And, the, and in this idealized scenario, what I've got is a stress variable um, that uh, is predicting startle reflex. I don't know why SPSS puts the startle reflex up here. You, you could actually add it here, I'm sure, just by clicking and adding a title. Uh, labels, uh, let's see here, scale. I can't find it off the top of my head how to add that, but anyway, you could you could push this startle reflex over here. Uh, but stress, uh, my, the hypothesis here is very high de idealized data is that as you get stress in a mouse, its startle reflex increases. But at first, there's not a huge change in its startle reflex. 
It's only once it gets really high that you start to get enormous startle reflexes. And that's a uh, that's uh, probably a typical nonlinear effect in the behavioral sciences. Another one would be when people are 